Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today we're finally kicking off Road to Rank in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. Of course, Road to Rank is a series where I climb the online competitive Pokemon ladder in game and provide live commentary as I go. For those that might be new to the channel or don't know who I am, welcome. My name, as I mentioned, is Aaron, and I am a competitive Pokemon VGC player, content creator, and commentator. I've been playing VGC since its first year, all the way back in 2008, and I've played for several, several years. I used to be a really hardcore season competitor, and in more recent years, I've kind of trans transitioned over to becoming a content creator and a commentator for the Pokemon Company International. If you've watched the World Championship streams from 2016 onwards, you may have seen me on some of those streams. For 2020, my goal is really to be able to balance both commentating and competing because I really want to get back into competing as well as creating content for you guys. So really excited to kick off this series. Now, some of you might be confused because we actually don't have a VGC 2020 rule set announced quite yet. I would probably expect that sometime within the next two to three weeks or so, especially because the rules officially swap over on January 1st and the first major tournament is Dallas Regionals, which is mid-January or so. So I think we should get a formal announcement relatively soon. That being said, I wanted to start getting competitive battles done in-game because I think they're really exciting and I want to just really get a feel of how doubles plays out, even if the current rule set isn't exactly what the VGC 2020 rule set will be. So there is an online ranked ladder currently. The rule set for that is all Pokemon are allowed outside of legendary Pokemon. You can Dynamax any Pokemon, but you cannot G-Max. So, obviously, we don't know what the VGC 2020 rule set will be. Maybe it's the exact same thing. Maybe G-Max is allowed. Maybe neither G-Max or Dynamax are allowed. We only have to... We pretty much have to wait and see. I definitely anticipate Dynamax being allowed, so the big question is whether G-Max is going to be allowed or not. Um, but, you know, regardless of what the rule set is going to be, I think the current online ladder will resemble VGC a fair amount, and even if not, I want to be able to just get some games in to get a feel of, like I said, what competitive battles in doubles is going to be like, especially Dynamax, because that's such a major component of competitive battles now, and that's something completely new that we haven't had before. So, we're going to get started. For the next couple of weeks or so, until the VGC rule set is announced, I'll just be doing uh, battles with the doubles rule set. If the doubles rule set is the exact same as VGC, it turns out, then I'll just keep doing this. If not, I'll just switch over to the official VGC rule set. So, really excited to finally kick this off. Um, the first team that I'll be using is actually built by a good friend called Angel Miranda. He is a top VGC player, and you can follow him on Twitter, linked in the description below. Um, this team is really cool, has a lot of old tricks that uh, now have some new moves. For example, a choice band Moxie Gyarados, which is really interesting, especially with the Dynamax, uh, you know, concept being introduced. So, we're gonna get started. I'm really excited. Uh, I, I played two games earlier just to get a feel of what things are like, but now we're finally kicking this off. If you guys enjoyed the series and want to see more, please, please, please show your support by leaving a like in the video, uh, leaving a comment, sharing it with anyone that might be interested in competitive battles, and giving any feedback, as always, as well. Thank you for tuning in, and let's get started. Um, so team preview here is pretty interesting, and so a lot of the teams currently on the online doubles ladder are going to be teams that are actually in-game, that like you can try out yourself. If you want, you can go to the battle tower and basically rent a bunch of different teams, which is pretty cool. Um, so my opponent's team is basically a setup-oriented team where you use screens with that new uh, Steel Dragon. I, I'm still learning all the new Pokemon names too, so excuse me if I don't know them off the top of my head. Um, so you basically have a ton of different setup, basically, um, and there's screens on the Steel Dragon. Um, so let's see, uh, what do I want to bring? This is going to be tricky. A Rotom could be a good pick early on, I think. Uh, this is Specs, so it can kind of just nuke things immediately. Um, I definitely want Gyarados. I think Gyarados is really interesting. I think I want Dragapult as well. Uh, it's a really cool Pokemon just in general. Um, let's see, Rotom Dragapult could be interesting with Gyarados. I kind of want Ferrothorn. It is kind of weak to Como. Um, Scrafty or Togekiss are also viable options. Togekiss kind of walls the, um, the Como. I hate, like, you have to scroll through between these two for Team Preview. Um, you know what? I'll bring Scrafty. Scrafty gets some cool new tricks now because it gets access to close combat, so this is a wider set. Um, also, for reference, for all teams that I personally build in the future, I will definitely share it online so you can try it out yourself as a rental team. Um, because this first team was built by a friend, uh, and there is no rental code for it that is publicly available, but going forward, like I mentioned, all teams that I build, I will share with you guys, and hopefully, um, that will be going soon. So, uh, okay, we actually are gonna see that new Steel, new Steel Dragon, um, against the Rotom and the Dragapult. So, this is a pretty good spot for me, honestly, I mean, I think I can just launch an overheat here, 
Uh, and Dragapult's in a really good position, honestly. I mean, I kind of want to Dragon Dance here because Como might be scared. Um, let's see. So, plus sign shows you your opponent's Pokemon. Cool. Uh, the only thing that resists Dragon or is immune is the Grimmsnarl in the back. So, I kind of don't mind just playing it safe this first turn because I have the speed advantage and just targeting the Como uh, with the Dragon Claw. And looks like there are no switches or anything, so I'm just gonna get a Dragon Claw that's fully boosted. Just gets the knockout there immediately. And Overheat should just get the knockout. Or actually, no, this resists it actually. So I don't think it'll get the knockout, but I am faster as well. Um, and it <laughs> just gets the double knockout. Okay. Yeah, most of the teams you're gonna play against early on in the ladder are gonna be these rental teams, which are actually pretty strong, but if you know what the rental teams do, then you have some sense of what to expect. Um, so Dragapult's really cool. This is a Dragon Dance variant. Um, uh, Stranitar comes out, and what's this one? There it is. Okay. Yeah, so this is where having Intimidate is obviously going to be really helpful. I can just swap out. Um, and you actually see a really cool interaction there where Clear Body now no longer is affected by Intimidate. Uh, it's a really, really big change that we've seen uh, in this generation. So um, this Rotom is Choice, so I might actually consider a double switch here um, just to get an Intimidate off here from Scrafty and to bring in Gyarados, which puts on a lot more offensive presence. Uh, Rotom is actually still quite good later on, especially if I can get a Thunderbolt off against the Gyarados. Uh, both of these Pokemon, I believe, uh, you know, have Dragon Dance on this team, so I want to just be able to Intimidate because that kind of mitigates uh, them speeding up. Um, of course, Dragapult is part Ghost type, so I don't want to eat up a crunch here, so I'm just going to double switch here. Um, and to be honest, like Scrafty should be able to just one-shot the Tyranitar, uh, although I believe it has Trouble Berry. Uh, either way, Scrafty is like the perfect Pokemon to switch in right now because I intimidate both physical attackers, even if they set up right now with something like a Dragon Dance, I'm still in an okay spot. Uh, probably expect to see Dynamax come out this turn, and that's exactly what we see. Um, yeah, the lead basically worked out perfectly. Um, I wanted to lead Rotom specifically to counter that new Dragon, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, Dragapult also puts on a lot of present, uh, offensive presence against my opponent's team. I figured if my opponent led, uh, I guess, like, Grimstar could probably pivot out, but other than that, like, I'm free to just go for attacks immediately. Uh, we're actually gonna see the Water Dynamax move, uh, come out, going against Scrafty, but the Intimidate there obviously paying dividends as I survive with over half. Uh, actually sets up the Rain now, which means that I could actually just fake out Gyarados next turn and go for a Banded Waterfall into my opponent's Tyranitar, especially because it's not going for a setup attack, so I'll be faster. Uh, Crunch actually still does a fair amount of damage even through the Intimidate, but now I have a pretty safe play of just fake out in Gyarados and going for a... I could Dynamax with my own Gyarados, but I actually don't think I need to right now. And this is actually a really fun interaction. So, with Choice Spanned, if you lock yourself into attack, you can actually Dynamax to unlock yourself, basically, and use any attack afterwards. So, this is one of the early sets that Angel created, where you basically have Moxie, potentially get a knockout early on really quickly, get an attack boost, and then you Dynamax, and then you're no longer locked into an attack, so you can freely choose any of your four attacks afterwards, even though you have the attack increase. A Gyarados here is going for a max guard, which is basically protect in Dynamax form, but that's fine because uh, the fake out there was to prevent it from attacking anyway, so basically accomplishes the same thing. Uh, we're going to get a Choice Band Water Boosted uh, Waterfall, or Rain Boosted Waterfall there, and that just knocks out Tyranitar cleanly, so no problem. And now it's 4v1. So I think I will Dynamax here just to show the cool interaction here about how I'm not actually locked into Waterfall, uh, which is still so fascinating. Um, and I'll just stay in with both here. So Dynamax is such an interesting concept, of course. We can Dynamax with any Pokemon at any point in the game, which makes this a lot more interesting than, say, locking a Pokemon uh, to, or, or, or like forcing a Z move on the Pokemon. Uh, my opponent's just going to forfeit there, so pretty straightforward game here. Um, yeah, I think this demonstrates, one, uh, Dragapult being really cool because it's really fast, so just getting powerful Dragon Claws off early on is really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, pretty straightforward game there. Uh, so one of the cool things, as you'll see when you play the Ranked Ladder as well, is you actually get items and battle points and stuff, I believe. So we just got a PP up for playing, which I think is really cool. Um, I believe you also get PvP as you rank up and throughout as well. And so there are different tiers. Uh, we just ranked up to two. And, uh, yeah, you get some battle points for ranking up, which is pretty cool. Similar to the Battle Tower. So, um, hopefully, it would be really cool if we can get to, like, Master Ball tier before BGC rules are officially announced. But if I'm only doing two to three games a day, I don't know how viable that is. Especially if I'm losing some. <laughs> uh, but, uh, good game to start things off, for sure. So, this next team is not a one of those predetermined teams, which is pretty cool. And it's got, um, an opposing... Is that the pre-evolution to Dragapult? I think so, right? 
Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, Ferrothorn here is really good, barring any random fire type attacks. And now one thing we don't have to worry about is Hidden Power Fire, of course, which is pretty interesting. Um, Corviknight's also pretty interesting here. So, uh, let's see what I want to go for. A Togekiss could still be decent to redirect attacks away. I do want to play a Gyarados-centric game because Gyarados is so good, but I do have to worry about my Lodic, so I think I'm going to definitely need Rotom. Maybe Rotom and Ferrothorn for the Milotic. Um, Togekiss is not a Tailwind, unfortunately. Uh, Dragapult can be pretty good, but I don't really... I, I do have to worry a lot about the... Uh, I guess against Gardevoir, I can just go for a Shadow Force. Um, team Preview here is kind of annoying because you have to swap back in and out. Let's see. So who do I not want to bring, I guess, is the question. I guess I'll uh, not bring Scrafty. Um, I like leading Rotom. I'm going to want... I'm not sure if this is the best choice. Um, I'm still getting used to the interface, so I'm spending more time talking and not as much actually picking my team, but I think this is okay. Yeah. So I didn't bring Togekiss. I kind of wanted Togekiss here for redirection, but without Tailwind, I don't think it really offers me too much, especially because there's a fair amount of spread type attacks from my opponent's team, like Dazzling Gleam on Gardevoir, Rock Slide on Tyranitar. So not sure if that's really worth it. I love that it shows you the screens, by the way, of you and your um, opponent as well going into the game. So let's see how this plays out. Um, Okay, my opponent is going to leave the Gardevoir and the Milotic. Nice. Okay, so Specs Rotom here definitely is really nice. Oh, that's a shiny Mil Milotic. That's sick. Uh, as Dragapult and Rotom comes out. Um, I mean, I do have to worry about Scarf Gardevoir, I guess. kind of want to just Specs T-Bolt here immediately. And go for a Shadow Force, I think. Or sorry, a Phantom Force. Yeah, I'm just going to go straight on the offense this first turn. Uh, we have good typing advantages here, so why not? Okay, so Phantom Force is going to take place, we're going to disappear, and Rotom's going to Thunderbolt off. Let's see if there's a Wakanda. It does not look like it, but that's quite a tanky Milotic. Takes it with over half, as it actually sets up a Light Spring. Okay. Uh, but we do have the speed advantage here, although Gardevoir could be Trick Room in here. Uh, no, just a Gleam. Okay. So that's really good. Um, Trick Room could have been kind of scary, although Trick Room would have been interesting because it would have meant that Dragapult would have went last. Um, so I'll take that. Not the worst turn for sure. Um, another Thunderbolt here probably won't knock out my Lodic because it does have the berry. Now, I could switch into Ferrothorn, but I do have to worry about a potential Scald Burn. So the question is, how much am I willing to take a Scald Burn? Um, because I will take a lot of damage here on Rotom. The other question is whether Phantom Force actually knocks out Gardevoir. I don't think it would, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't want to switch into Gyarados because Gyarados getting burned would be really ugly. Uh, I guess the other question is, what use do I have for Rotom after knocking out my Lodic? Because my Lodic really is the main threat. Uh, it is good for Corviknight. Yeah. Um, I think I probably will eat a Skull here. So I'm just going to switch into Ferrothorn, yeah. If I get burned, so be it. It's not the uh, worst. But having Rotom to just one-shot Corviknight would be really good. Alright, so Ferrothorn's out. Gardevoir's going to switch out. Okay, that's fine. Um, into, what is that? Granitar? Okay, that's fine. Yeah, so, I mean, you can see here that Ferrothorn's in a phenomenal position, barring Flamethrower on Granitar. So, we get a Phantom Force off. That actually still does decent damage, around 25% or so. Um, it's gonna be a Hydro Pump, not even a Skull. Okay, so I'm really glad I switched to Ferrothorn. Nice. Skull is typically the better move because, uh, my Lodic doesn't do much damage to begin with, so you kind of want to just fish for burns and heal up with Recover. Um, a recover there could have been kind of annoying, but no recover comes out. But this is the synergy that my Lodic has. You can have it next to physical type attackers, so that uh, your opponents are less incentivized to go for Intimidates, basically. Uh, the question is who I want to, you know, Dynamax in this game. Probably Gyarados, I think. I um, think knocking out my Lodic here would be ideal. Now, I am actually worried about... Um, so Tyranitar here could have Flamethrower. It would be pretty obscure. Uh, it definitely would be pretty obscure, but it's certainly possible. Otherwise, it's probably more likely going to Crunch. Mm. Could also Gyro Ball, but I don't think that'll knock it out. If I knock out the Milotic, then... Yeah, that's the bigger threat to Rotom out of the way. I think I'm going to just protect this turn. If my opponent actually goes for Flamethrower, I get a free switch into Gyarados, and then I can just Waterfall. And we're actually going to see the Dynamax come out from my opponent. Okay. 
this is really fascinating because Dynamax is obviously, you know, puts you on a timer, right? So you want to be Dynamaxing. But, I mean, the question is, do you want to Dynamax early on or later on? Uh, my opponent's actually going to choose to Dynamax my Lodic, which is interesting uh, because it's quite low already, just to give it the HP boost potentially to survive uh, a Power Whip. We'll see what attack it goes for. Uh, my Lodic definitely does not threaten me too much on the Ferrothorn side. It could go for an Ice-type attack, which will break through this Protect. Uh, that's actually exactly what it's going to be. Yeah, so this will do damage through Protect, but that's fine. Um, it will set up the Hail as well, which could be beneficial because it means that uh, Rotom will actually do more damage to Tyranitar now that it doesn't get the special defense boost. Uh, and just the Crunch comes out. Okay, good. Perfect. So the Protect there was uh, exactly what we needed. Power Whip, Disconnect. Nice. Yeah, so I'm not sure that was worth it for my opponent choosing to Dynamax something that was really low in front of a Ferrothorn. Like, I think you typically... I mean, if Dynamax allows you to survive attack, then it's absolutely worth it if you're trading damage. But here I basically really didn't take any damage, and now my opponent doesn't have the Dynamax potential for the rest of the game, which makes my life a lot easier, um, because I think I'll definitely want Dynamax Gyarados. What's interesting so far about early game team building is do you Dynamax something that is... Do you, do you team build around a Pokemon that you always Dynamax, or, you know... Uh, do you kind of create a team that's so flexible that any Pokemon can Dynamax? Um, I think ideally you have a team where you have the flexibility where it's like you normally want to Dynamax this Pokemon, but even if you don't, it's not the end of the world. Um, okay. So I might actually use, let's see, uh, Ferrothorn's in a good spot right now for sure. I don't want to risk missing, so I think I'm just going to Gyro Ball here. And I think I'm just going to actually Phantom Force just to avoid an attack from the Tyranitar. Basically, with Gyro Ball damage and Hail damage, maybe Tyranitar actually faints next turn from Phantom Force. Um, but I basically want to avoid a Crunch this turn, which will knock me out. Uh, so Corviknight actually home falls. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, now, Corviknight's quite bulky. I don't think it really should threaten the Ferrothorn too much, though, <laughs> as Tyranitar actually Earthquakes. Okay, interesting. Um, that shouldn't do very much with Ferrothorn, though. It's a relatively bulky Pokemon. Yeah, especially with Leftovers. You're just healing back every turn. So, Gyro Ball here will do some damage to Tyranitar. Uh, wow. Actually gets a knockout. I wasn't expecting that. Okay. Nice. So, so far so good. I think uh, my opponent Dynamaxing so early on obviously has made my life a lot easier this game. Um, and I've still got Rotom, which I specifically saved for Incorvenite. So, definitely feel pretty good right now. Anyway, yeah. I mean, this game has been interesting mainly because of the use of Dynamax on my Lodic. Um... I think maybe my opponent just wanted to trade, hoping that I would just attack there with the Dragon Bolt, uh, but that was not the case, obviously. So, Phantom War should just get directed into Gardevoir, right? So I'm just kind of free to leave Seek here, I think. We'll see if it knocks out Gardevoir. I kind of expected to. Gardevoir is not exactly the uh, most defensive Pokemon, and it does get the knockout. Nice. This is hype! Uh, my first time playing with a new Pokemon, and it's been putting in work. I haven't Dragon Danced with it quite yet. As uh, Ferrothorn is actually faster, or are we seeing something like a Whirlwind here? Oh, it's going for Revenge. Okay. Uh, we should survive that. Yeah, no problem. Nice. Yeah. So, pretty much, I mean, Ferrothorn looked really good in Team Preview in this game, and fortunately, my opponent didn't have something random like Flamethrower on Tyranitar, and it actually basically could have won v in this game. Uh, my opponent really had nothing for it. Um, back in, like, VGC 2014, you would maybe sometimes see, like, Hidden Power Fire on Gardevoir, but Hidden Power not, now not being part of the game makes it a lot easier to kind of play around these random things, and so uh, it makes using four Pokemon that are four times weak to something a little bit easier, I would say. So, uh, Light Screen wears off, but since we were using physical attacks pretty much the entire time, not really much of a problem, so... Um, I could just switch out, but I think I'm just going to attack here. Uh, I kind of want to see the Dragon Dance animation, actually, so let's go for that. And yeah, I, I like when it says the battle has been cancelled now as opposed to forfeited, but um, yeah, pretty straightforward game, I think. Ferrothorn really being a key member there, not having to worry about things, and it's such a good defensive pivot. This game was interesting because I wanted to bring Scrafty, and Scrafty would have been quite nice against things like Tarantar, obviously, but uh, with my opponent having Corviknight and the Milotic, it just didn't make too much sense, I think. Um, the scary thing about Milotic is like you have to play very carefully around it because if you don't, and you just, and wow, we actually level up two ranks there. Okay, cool. Um, we reached Pokeball tier already. Nice. We get some battle points. 30 BP. That's actually really sick. So we've gotten 40 already. Um, I'll play one more. I mean, normally I do two games, but we're earlier on in the ladder, so uh, we have more time, basically, to play games. Um, yeah, let's see. I didn't even Dynamax that game. Opponents rank four here, so that's exciting. They've played a bunch of games. And let's see what... I, I feel like the team should pop up first. Um, this is cool, though. That's definitely uh, quite the competitive team with Titar Excadrill. Uh, 
the new Ice Moth, which is really cool. Bio Bloom is an interesting pick here. Um, it's definitely potential manual sun, obviously, with the uh, Dynamaxing. Mm, so Scrafty is obviously decent um, for the quick Intimidate against the physical attackers. If my opponent decides to lead, for example, Tarantar Exedrill. Uh, like, I could lead Scrafty and Gyarados, which I'm kind of actually tempted to do, just to get a quick fake out and bandit attack. Not sure how great Dragapult here is, uh, being weak to Frostmoth and Gardevoir. I'm thinking Scrafty, Gyarados, um, Rotom's still okay. Uh, Ferrothorn's actually really good if I knock out the Arcanine, so maybe the goal is to knock out Arcanine and then just wall with Ferrothorn. Um, and I want Ferrothorn as a switch in to fairy type attacks as well because I don't resist fairy too well otherwise. So the question is, do I want to bring Togekiss? How important is Follow Me? I don't think it's that important in this because of the spread attacks once again. So I think I'll go Scrafty Gyarados, Rotom, and Ferrothorn. So let's do that. Scrafty Gyarados lead. Rotom and Ferrothorn. Yeah. Would love to feature Dragapult. And I think in upcoming teams I build will feature a lot of newer Pokemon just because I want to learn what they do. Um, but banking on the old ones aren't bad, especially because a lot of the old ones you already know have been historically good in VGC, so they'll probably be good again. Something like Scrappy, for example, is going to be an excellent pick this year as well as Gyarados. Even if G-Max is allowed, for example, I still think these are going to be staple Pokemon. So this is being Gardevoir Excavator. Okay, so this is actually really interesting and a really key thing to note uh, is one of the new mechanic changes where speed is actually implemented during the turn. Whereas before, for example, uh, if you switch in Tyranitar here, Excadrill would not get the speed boost. Now, if Gardevoir switches into Tyranitar, it immediately becomes, Excadrill immediately becomes the fastest Pokemon in the field. So there are a bunch of options here. We do have Fake Out, so we can just go for Fake Out into Gardevoir and launch a Waterfall into Excadrill. Uh, my opponent Gard my opponent's Gardevoir might switch out. Uh, Gar Gardevoir might also just stay in and go for something like a Hyper Voice immediately. But I don't mind Fake Outing here and Waterfalling Exc Excadrill, I think, just to play it safe. Um, my opponent could switch Gardevoir out into Tyranitar, but then you have Tyranitar and minus one Excadrill against Gyarados, Scrafty, both which can just one-shot you. So I think I'm going to play it safe this first turn, just Fake Out Gardevoir, Waterfall, and Excadrill. And Excadrill is going to be the one swapping out. Okay. Into Frostmoth. I don't actually really know what Frostmoth does. Um, so... I'm actually going to look that up right now. And a Dynamax immediately. Interesting. Okay. So Dynamaxing in the first turn is interesting, especially when you're up against a Fakeout user, because I waste a turn of your Dynamax. Basically. So I don't mind that. Uh, I don't mind seeing that at all. Okay, so we're going to get the Fakeout off. And you can't even see Gardevoir. Waterfall's new animation is super sick, and uh, Banded Waterfall actually just gets the knockout on Frostmoth, which is really nice. Uh, the question here is, does Gardevoir have Thunderbolt? Because it certainly can carry that. Oh, wait, yeah, I'm sorry. You can't uh, fake out Dynamax users. Um, that was actually a really nice play on my opponent's side. I totally forgot about that concept. I was like, yeah, why would you do that? So I'm learning right now. Um, so yeah, nice Dynamax choice to block the fake out. Here I was being like, why would you waste the turn Dynamax? <laughs> So we trade knockouts there, um, as it has left me. Okay, that's good to know. Um, so you can either bring out Tyranitar or Excadrill right now. The interesting thing is that you can't bring out Bolt. My opponent didn't seem to bring very good Ferrothorn answers here either. Um, I think I'm just going to go out in a Rotom, actually. Yeah, I can Bolt switch. Uh, Gyarados is also faster than Gardevoir, which is a huge piece of information because I got that knockout. So I can just go for uh, Dynamax on myself and target down the Gardevoir. Um, let's see. My opponent could swap out Gardevoir now into Tyranitar and just launch a Rock Slide, which would be annoying. Maybe Ferrothorn would have been better because surely my opponent's lost from his Tyranitar. You can't flinch though, a Dynamax Pokemon. So maybe it's better to Dynamax Gyarados. Um, I just want a Waterfall to knock out Excadrill. Yeah, because then Ferrothorn should win this game. So I'll Volt Switch the Gardevoir. Uh, if it switches out in Tyranitar, that's fine. If it stays in, then I just get to pivot out. And I'll go for the Dynamax and attack the Excadrill here. So we'll see if my opponent switches out. Doesn't look like it. Okay. So that's good, because it means the speed advantage is not in my opponent's favor. Or, or you, you don't have... I don't know how fast the Excadrill is. I mean, no, normally, like, you run, like, a fair amount of speed anyway. 
So we'll see if Gyarados actually outspeeds it here. Even if not, though, I'm uh, Dynamaxing here to avoid the flinch chance, as I just learned. <laughs> That's something I knew, but I, I totally forgot about it. You kind of have to see it in action. Um, yeah. So I'm just going to Volt Switch here. I could have just overheated the extra drill, but the reason I didn't was because I was afraid of Tyranitar coming in uh, on the other slot. Fire Thorn here is a great pivot. Uh, it should wall pretty much everything my opponent's going to launch my way. Uh, if I get to knock out this extra drill, then I think Fire Thorn should just clean up this game. And I'm faster. Excellent. So I think that should just be game here. Uh, no sash either this is where scrafty is huge having that early intimidate basically uh forces gyarados out immediately or sorry forces extra draw out immediately and what would have been interesting there is even if extra drill protects um you still get some damage through get the moxie boost are we gonna see a thunderbolt nope just my max storm or not thunderbolt, electric attack back or we take that easily so even though my opponent blocked that dynamax turn one the band on gyarados allowed me to just get a quick knockout which is really Okay, so it changes the frame, but at this point, like I think, like I said, Ferrothorn should just win with a lack of um, fire type attacks. Uh, Gardevoir's not a threat at all, so it's just a matter of whether Tyranitar. I mean, Tyranitar presumably is my opponent's last one, it doesn't make much sense. But it's actually Arcanine! Okay. Well, that is the one Pokemon that actually threatens Ferrothorn. Um, so I'll actually play it safe here and switch out into Rotom and just go for. Uh, actually, let me think this through. I don't want to throw this game. We know Gyarados has a speed advantage against Gardevoir. Arcanine's Furl Blitz in rain actually probably doesn't knock out the Ferrothorn. So it actually might be better just to Gyro Ball Gardevoir and go for Water into Arcanine. Uh, I was worried about Arcanine having an electric type attack, but with it not and just going for extreme speed, that's going to be good. Nice. I'll probably play a fourth one, actually. It's the first debut episode. Um, as well. This team has been working out great so far though, so thanks to Angel for making it. You can follow me on Twitter, like I said, in the description below. Feel free to ask him with any questions about the team as well, if you have any. As uh, Gardevoir's just spamming a Max Mindstorm, but that's fine. Um, is that a crit? Yeah. I was, like, surprised about that. Anyway, yeah, the whole uh, Dynamaxing so you avoid flinch is actually a really cool concept, and I'm glad that I learned that mistake in this one, because that's really difficult. Uh, but the upside of Dynamax is that it's always single target attacks, right? So... There, my opponent Dynamaxing meant that I didn't have to worry about Dazzling Gleam, so Gyarados didn't have to take any chip damage. So, three wins in a row so far, not bad. Um, and like I said, it's the first episode, debut one, so let's actually play a fourth game. Um, yeah, it's nice that we've been actually been able to find a fair amount of people on the ladder, though, which is nice. I was kind of concerned that there wouldn't be enough people to play early on. Um, yeah. Like I said, it'd be really nice if we could actually hit Master Ball tier here before VGC rules are actually announced. That would be sick. Um, I don't know how likely that is. And if VGC rules end up being <laughs> this, this doubles rule set, that would be kind of funny as well. But yeah. I don't know exactly how the tiers work. Um, because we skipped from 1 to 3, which was interesting. Uh, but maybe that's because our opponent was like higher ranked. I'm not entirely sure. So, yeah, anyway, at this point, let me know what you guys think about these battles, what you guys think about Dynamaxing, because um, Dynamaxing, I think, has been the most interesting concept so far. That's kind of the reason why I wanted to jump into things, just to see the interaction uh, in Dynamaxing. Um, definitely curious about that. I do think that like, the next couple of days will probably be, as you see right now, might be difficult to actually find games uh, at a certain point, because you basically get matched up based off uh, the people that are in your tier. So as we advance and go higher in tiers, it might be harder to find games. So hopefully we find someone. Um, we'll have to see. If not, might just call it an episode. <laughs> uh, fingers crossed, guys. Oh, we actually found someone. Awesome. Cool. Rank 4 as well. So far, I really like the interface and everything. Um, I do wish there was, like, a rating as well as a rank, kind of like you have in a lot of other competitive games. Looks like my opponent's using the default rain team here. Um, which is gonna be interesting. This team is scary. It's very scary. Um... Oh, especially because the threat of... Okay, so I mean, I'm definitely going to want Ferrothorn. Uh, it's got... My opponent's got that Barrascudo Pokemon, which is really interesting. Um, I'm thinking of leading Dragapult, I think. Uh, Dragapult's quite good here. Um, I mean, it is weak to ice. Um, but it's a lot of fast damage off. I think I I definitely need one of Rotom and Scrafty. Bringing Rotom can be a little bit difficult because if I don't change the weather, I kind of just get blown away by Ludicolo and the Seismitoad. Uh, the damage output is tempting, but I think Scrafty is probably a more consistent call. So I think 
What makes most sense is probably Scrafty, um, Ferrothorn, Gyarados, and Dragapult. However, I could also go Togekiss, Dragapult, and basically go for a Follow Me uh, Dragon Dance oriented game. That might actually be kind of interesting. Um, but Gyarados is quite good here because of its resist to things. Ah, <sighs> tricky. What do I want to lead? Uh, Togekiss. Gyarados. I want to feature Dragapult so much. Uh, but I'm going to go further and Scrafty. <laughs> I want to win more. I thought Dragapult really could be good here. It's just that it's still pretty frail. Um, and the Pokemon I'm bringing are both here. But I, I think part of the thing I have to get used to is also uh, making my moves in on time. Because this is a new battle interface and everything. Um, and you have to switch back and forth between Team Preview, which I think is kind of annoying. So, I think Dragapult you could actually make a really good argument for. Um, especially because I think I could have gone like Togepiss Dragon, Toge... <laughs> uh, Togekiss, not Togepiss. Um, oh, my opponent actually leaves Rotom. Oh, sorry, not Rotom. Wow, I am really mumbling at my words. Uh, the Raichu. Okay. This is actually Bright Powder Raichu, fun fact. Um... With the Rain Up? Honestly, I think I can just follow me here. Redirect an Electric-type attack away. Oh, I don't even need a Dynamax, yeah, I'll just... Ah, he could fake out Gyarados and Tailwind, I guess. But then I can just follow me Waterfall next turn. Ah, looks like he's actually gonna go for it. Oh, he actually fakes out Togekiss. Or she, excuse me. Okay, we take those. Uh, this gets to show you the beauty of Dynamaxing now. I knock out the Raichu, and now whatever comes in, like it's probably Ludi or Seismitoad, I can just go for uh, the Fly Dynamax attack. Probably Tailwind, yeah. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you should definitely fake out Gyarados there all the time, because your priority is higher than, uh, follow me. Unless you want to, I guess, avoid a potential Tailwind from the Togekiss, which would make sense, but, uh, I brought Togekiss, and it's actually better speed up. Okay. I actually do want to look up what it does. Normally, when I play VGC or competitive battles, I don't use any internet resources, because I think that's the best way to emulate actual competitive play, but it is earlier on right now in the season, so I'd rather just get to know what things actually do. This is just pure water type, so, honestly... I think I'm just gonna follow me, Dynamax, and go for Grassy. Actually, what's the additional effect from Roxy? Because uh, I'm not getting any Grassy playing effects right now. Ooh, it's Sandstorm. Oh, that's better, yeah, because then that shuts down Ludicolo if it comes out of the back. That's definitely better. It's also cool, like, you, like Dynamax is so cool because now you have so much counterplay to so many different strategies like Weather. Uh, okay, so my opponent's gonna Dynamax, I guess, Barrascuda. Shouldn't be a problem. Oh wait, I'm trolling. Rock Z isn't super effective. Grassy is. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I, in my head, I was like, oh, either will just one shot. But Grassy is definitely the correct call there, just to get the guaranteed knockout. That's fine. We gotta make mistakes alone. We definitely made some already today. Uh, the main one being fake outing or forgetting that uh, fake out doesn't affect Gardevoir. But I still fake out there. I think all the time. Um, just because it forces you to Dynamax and trading Scrafty there in that position is actually totally like that, so. Because in that game my opponent had like no water resistance whatsoever. Okay. Galloper protects, that's totally fine. It's not the threat. Uh, Bear Scooter gets uh, Swift Swim by the way, so it's probably gonna go just for a water type attack into Togekiss, which I think we should survive. Let's see. Yep, Max Geyser. So, uh, yeah, even if we don't get the knockout here, that's fine. Does this knock me out? Wow, it does. Jeez, okay. That's powerful. But, uh, by here going, and it's life orb. Ooh, interesting, okay. Yeah, by going for the rock fall, I'll change the weather, which forces Pelipper to switch out, or forces Barrasquita to go for a water type attack. And that actually gets the knockout. All right, that was calculated. I was thinking in my head it should get the knockout. It's, uh, oh, that was a crit, though. Yeah, I think the crit probably mattered there because of the additional bulk, so... Uh, going for the grass the, uh, move there is better, I think, because I trade, get the knockout, even if he got max. So, uh, not the best play on my end there. But it means now I'll, the game's probably over because my opponent can't change the weather anymore. Uh, unless you go for a natural rain dance, but... Yeah. Anyway, without that crit, I think we're fine anyway. Uh, mainly because we would get a free switch in into pretty much everything. So Scrappy could have come in. I could have just gotten another Intimidate off against Barrascuta. This team is really anti-rain heavy, honestly. So, yeah. It's... Really, it wasn't too much to worry about. I assume Ludicolo is my opponent's last one. Might be Ferrothorn. It's actually the Ferrothorn. Okay. Uh, which is exactly why we needed to bring Scrafty in this game. 
Although with uh, da -da 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 -da, with Dynamax, you can just go for anything. So this is kind of cool because I'll get to show you how you kind of attack through the choice band with uh, Dynamax. So we went for Rock Ball earlier. I'm just gonna go for I'll go for Airstream here, I guess, uh, because it's stab. So yeah, the cool thing about Choice Band, and I think it's the same for Specs and Scarf, I would assume, is the the choice item basically doesn't affect you afterwards. Um, don't think we get the attack increase, but you get to use other moves, right? So one really cool concept that's going to be seen is using a choice Pokemon, getting some early pressure, and then Dynamaxing it to remove the choice item, getting the additional bulk, and then playing around that. Um, okay, Pelipper's going to Hurricane. Which does more than it would have liked. So I probably should have conserved <laughs> Scrafty and just, like, switched out there. Um, because, yeah, Pelipper being faster there wasn't shocking, but... Yeah, it's fine. After a close combat, uh, any attack should knock out the Ferrothorn. The Ferrothorn can't, like, 1v2 this, especially because I have a Ferrothorn in the back. Plus, Gyarados is at plus 3 now for Moxie, which is super, super sick. Um, let's see how much close combat is. I would think, like, 80% or so. A little bit less. Like, 75. But, yeah. This is, uh, this is White Herb Scrafty, so we get rid of the stat decreases. Um, but Scrafty should faint here from any attack from Ferrothorn. Um... Unless Firethorn didn't target it for some reason. But that Jar Ball should be gone. Anyway. But yeah. Uh, this game features the strength of Dynamax. Being able to change the weather like that was super sick. Um, totally forgot that Rock was able to change weather. So that's... Th like I think it's very hard to lose against Rain with this team composition. Because you have uh, Gyarados. Uh, you have Fake Out. You have ways to change the weather immediately. With um, uh, what we do here. doesn't really matter. Yeah, you have ways to change the weather with Gyarados, uh, Togekiss for redirection, meaning that it's pretty hard to kind of break through things. Um, so, yeah. Solid start today, guys. Uh, four wins in a row with this team, which has been really fun. So, I wonder if we get to Great Ball tier from that. Not sure. Uh, probably not, because you still have to rank up a bunch before you tier up. But uh, definitely a fun one to kick things off. So, a bunch of competitive games today. Uh, this team is really solid. So, once again, thanks to Angel for building it, like I mentioned. Um, okay, so we got a Zinc there. Yeah, so you get, like, random items throughout the course of, uh, playing. You can also potentially check your opponent's team, which is kind of cool. Um, I just click continue battling, because I want to see if you rank up here, basically. Okay, yeah, so we made it to the second tier of Pokeball tier. We get 10 battle points from that. Very nice. Okay, um, I'm actually gonna cut it short there. I don't want to start a game by accident here, so I'm just gonna go back. Um, anyway, yeah, thanks for watching, guys, <laughs> as we see the no signal there. Um... Thanks for watching. That was a really fun episode. Um, yeah, we're just getting started with competitive battles. And I'm going to try to switch teams relatively quickly because I want to try out a bunch of different Pokemon and strategies. Um, but I'm still trying to build my own team in game. So like I mentioned, uh, this team was built by a friend Angel. And there's some bunch of other uh, rental teams that are available uh, currently as well. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get my first team within the next week or so. I already have a bunch of Pokemon. I'm just trying to really plan out what I actually want to use. Um, and build like a cohesive strategy around anyway uh, around those anyway guys that's gonna be it for this one the very first episode hope you guys enjoyed and um, we're all waiting for bgc rolls to drop but until then um yeah hope you guys enjoy this series uh i mean once bgc rolls come this it will, we'll just be playing road to rank but with bgc rolls but until then yeah anyway I'll, i'm gonna be trying to do this on a daily basis so if you enjoy please share support by leaving a like and i'll catch you guys next time all right peace